Zinc Media. Feel the power of knowledge. put on the defensive you know, look one of the things you have to understand is that the left has been on the offense for a hundred years now and they've really been laying it into us for the last 50 or 60 years now so you have to you have to go on the we have to stop being on the defense i'm not going to be on the defense anymore not anymore I, I don't need to defend my position because we're not the ones that have created this mess Conservatives are not the one that created this mess. This was created by liberals and rhinos. They're the ones that need to defend their position. So why do we let them continue to be on the offense and having us defend our position when we're not the ones who created the mess? So it's now time for us to go on the offensive. And I hope that somebody gets to these candidates uh, for president on the GOP side and tells them the same thing. I, you know, hey, take this podcast to them. Let them hear it. I don't care. They need to hear what I just said. They need to understand it. They need to be on the offense. They need to be fighting fire with fire. They need to understand that they should not have the pressure. They should reflect it back on those who have created the mess, and that is the Democrats. And the Democrats are the ones who are in charge of the liberal cult. So they're the ones that need to do it. Good evening, my fellow Americans and freedom lovers all over the planet. It is I, your lovable host, Elrod, coming to you live from my bunkerized home studio somewhere within the great granite state of New Hampshire, where the state motto is still live free or die. It is not big government or bust. And yes, as I said earlier tonight, I checked today and it's still live free or die. It is Friday. May the 8th in the year of our Lord, 2015, we're heading, we're really into the May days right now. And here in New England, it's, um, uh, in my neck of the woods of New England, it's been, it's been, you know, oh, by the way, then the, because this is free for all Friday, uh, feel free to give me a call at 603-835-3224. Again, that's a toll free number, 603-835-3224. You know, I... I I found out that I have listenership um, from all over the place. And when I say all from all over the place, there is a good chunk of listeners. Now, I, it doesn't tell me if, the, if there are Americans in these places or not. Um, but the numbers that come in that I have begun to see and started getting back shows that I've got a rather large listenership in the countries of England, uh, Great Britain, in Germany, and even Australia, I, I, I find that interesting. I don't know why Germans would be listening to my program, unless they're Americans in Germany, which then that makes perfect sense. But if it's Germans that understand English listening, I don't, maybe there's something over there that they want to try to change in Germany. I, I, I well, the same thing with with, with England. Well, um. Yeah, England's got it's got their own issues. I don't know much about English politics, British politics, um, and, and I I'm not going to. I know that um, Cameron has won re-election, and evidently that was uh, he's his party won 57 seats that they weren't supposed to wasn't predicted that they'd win. So it's kind of a landslide over there for him. Um, but again, I don't. 
That's about as far as I can go with that. If I don't know something, I'm going to tell you I don't know it, and I'm not going to talk about it. I don't know anything about British politics, so I cannot comment other than the fact that uh, the report that I saw today was that uh, he was not expected. He was it was supposed to be a really close, tough race, and that they you know his party was expected to lose seats, and instead they won 57 seats that they weren't expected to win. So I don't know. I don't know if this was kind of like you know the Dewey wins the White House type of thing. Uh, over here, or, or, you know, I, I don't, I don't, I'm sure they will straighten it out and get to the bottom of it if they really need to, but congratulations to, uh, Prime Minister, uh, Cameron and, uh, and his folks over there in Great Britain. Listen, folks, uh, this $15 an hour minimum wage. That the left is trying to trying to foist on this whole nation. Now, see, this is where where we have to start taking it and start turning it on them, forcing them to defend their position. Uh, because in Seattle, it's it's taking hold. And this is a uh, truthinmedia.com story. And um, I I must admit, I've never had a story from Truth in Media come across my newsfeed. And this is the first time. And I'm looking at it. I'm going through looking at the Truth and Media site at truthandmedia.com. And I got to tell you, I like it. So it's now on my favorite list. For those of you in Rush Limbaugh's Realinda, that was not a Max Headroom error. I did that on purpose. And I know some people are scratching their head. Max, who? You're going to have to go back to the 80s to know who Max Hedrum is. Um, <laughs> I, I know some people are... I did, it's, it might be dating me, but uh, Max Hedrum was... Um, he was he was a, a non-computer-generated, computer-generated character from the 80s. And, and in order for you to understand that, you would have to go back. And I, he's probably on, on YouTube. And in, in fact, um, maybe I'll, I'll try to throw some um, stuff up on, on RodEckles.net about Max Headroom if I can find some. And people understand what I'm talking about. Max Headroom, he was the bomb back in the day. And um, I, he, look, the, the technology that, that Max Hedrum was supposed to be that was far in the future, uh, it, you know, we, we have voice, voiceover technology and, and animation technology that, that pretty much supersedes him. Kind of like, like Star Trek. You know, Star Trek was like four, what, four, five hundred years into the future from, from now, and, and we have a lot of the stuff today that they have uh, 400 years from now. Um, so it's kind of it's kind of hard for all these spa- and and Star Trek is this is the reason why they had to reboot the original Star Trek because in the, in the TV series they were still using analog gauges and they had to be very careful with the next generation as to you know not they couldn't be too far advanced but they had to be far enough advanced that they were beyond what we were in the eighties when when it was on. Um, on first run and it's it's kind of interesting to see that we've got the look i've got one of them in my in my hand you know they 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 had uh, picard in the 80s and early 90s when star trek next generation was on he had basically what we would call a, a tablet and we can read books on it just like he was on a tablet but we're not 400 years in the future. We're, we're, I mean, we started getting these tablets not even 20 years after Star Trek went off, uh, Next Generation went off the air. Not even a generation oh, out of Star Trek. And we had these things. Uh, so, you know, they had, they had trouble with that. And when they wanted to start making more Star Trek movies because of the popularity of the, of the Next Generation TV show and movies and the other Star Trek uh, series and the Star Trek Enterprise, well, they realized that they were caught between a rock and a hard place, that they couldn't go back with the original Star Trek kind of stuff because we, were already, we already surpassed that in technology a lot. So they had to reboot the whole series. 
And I understand that's why they had to change the whole thing and how, how Vulcan got blown up and that kind of thing. I didn't like it, but I understand it. And it, but it's hard to make a futuristic type of movie today because one, you have to do it in a believable manner, but you can't be so outlandish as it, at, as it not to be believable because of what we do and what we have for technology today and what's on the technological horizon within the current lifespan of most people. It's amazing. Uh, with that said, we have to understand that there's a lot of technology out there. And some of that technology is getting really, really inexpensive, cheap, if you will, while getting better. And some of the newer stuff is really, really pricey, uh, but eventually will come down in price. That's the way it always is. That's the way it always works. But when you bring it, like, like the fast food restaurants, I mean, today they don't, you know, McDonald's and Burger King, they, don't, they do not make their hamburgers the same way that they made them back in the 80s. You know, back in the 80s and and, and 90s, um, you know, they still had a a flame, Burger King had a flame broiler that you had to flip the burgers and everything in in order to to cook them. And in McDonald's, they still had the grill. You know, you press the burger in and you flip and all that kind of stuff. They don't do that today. It's all automated. You stick the burger in one side and it comes out, you know, frozen on one side, it comes out cooked on the other. You don't got to do any flipping. It's all ready for you. So that type of thing changes, but those grills and those fryolators are more expensive than the original grill and the original broiler that those companies used. But it saves them in labor cost. Because now instead of having two or three people on the grill, you can have one person. During your rush hour, one person can operate that. I mean, now, I worked at McDonald's, so I know how to operate. I mean, the grill was large enough at the McDonald's that I worked at where you, where you could have two people on the grill at the same time. And not only did you have two people on the grill, but you also then had to have somebody on the buns. And they, the person on the buns was responsible for, for actually finishing off the burger. You know, because the burger would be cooked and the, and the buns would be there and they put the, the burger on the bun. So that was three people... Trying to put a minimum of three people trying to put together burgers and the fish sand, uh, fish sandwich and uh, the chicken, the original chicken sandwich during rush hour. At least there's probably more. And today they can reduce that number by one or two people. It only takes one person to, to, to cook all the burgers. Not even that. Because the per- person who's putting the burgers together can also quickly load the hopper that cooks the burgers. So it, up front, there might be a, a, a cost, but in the long run, even in the short run, the business owner is going to save money in labor costs. That's probably the second most costly item in a business is their labor cost. And now you have the government that just wants to up that business's labor cost. You know, hey, you're going to pay more. So this is what's happening already because Seattle, Washington has this $15 per hour minimum wage increase that's coming into effect. And wait till you hear how they're doing it. Now, you want to talk about being discriminatory. Listen to this. Uh, a pizza shop is closing in response to Seattle minimum wage hike. Uh, and the story goes, it's written um, uh, by a Barry Donegan. And the story goes, people like me are finding themselves in a tougher situation than ever, said a Seattle pizza shop employee, Devin Jaron. In, uh, in comments to uh, Fox uh, Q13, Fox News, Earlier this month, Jaron was the recipient of a raise as Seattle's mandated minimum wage hike began to kick in, forcing large businesses with more than 500 employees and small business franchises to first begin paying employees $11 per month starting or per hour starting this month before requiring the uh, rages to be set at $15 per hour by 2017. 
Now, small businesses without franchise relationships, in other words, true mom and pops, not franchise units, won't be allowed to to uh, won't be forced to pay the fifteen dollars per hour in twenty seventeen. They will have until twenty twenty one. So if you're a franchisee, you may have, you know, 15 employees in your shop. But the guy down the street who does exactly the same thing you do, but he doesn't franchise on his on his, uh, you know, on his back on his back, has the same 15 employees. You're going to have to pay your people. Fifteen dollars an hour by 2017. So between 2017 and 2021, you are behind you're at a at a competitive disadvantage because the guy down the street who does not have a franchise on a franchise on his back doesn't have to pay fifteen dollars an hour. So here's the deal. Now, though Jaron will receive a bigger paycheck until August, his paychecks will stop. Or his paychecks will stop for good after that, as the small business Z Pizza franchise at which he works is set to close under pressure from the new minimum wage. Now, the franchisee's owner, uh, Ridu Shah Burnham, described the uh, efforts she's already taken to adopt uh, to the phased-in increase of the new $11 per, uh, minimum per hour wage. I've let one person go since April 1st. I've cut others' hours since April 1st. I've taken those hours on myself because I don't pay myself. However, the fact that her 12-employee business has a franchise relationship with Z Pizza means that under the new minimum wage law, she's required to retool her business such that it can stay open while paying employees $15 an hour within just two years, rather than being able to wait until 2021 like other small businesses. A feat which Burnham says she cannot do so businesses are starting to close people are starting to lose their jobs business owner is saying you know what i i gotta pay this minimum wage now which means one of you three gotta go because look you know, th- this whole notion that everybody thinks that, that if you own a small business, you're automatically rich. That is not the, uh, there are a lot of small businesses in this country that the ownership, they're lucky if they're in the middle class. They make sure that their employees, if they have them, get paid first. There are a lot of times when owners sometimes don't pay themselves because the money isn't there. And if they want to stay in business and hopefully get past that, they they got to forego their own pay. It's their company. They put the money in. They made the investment. They took the risk. And they can't enjoy it. Because government is coming in from these stupid idiot liberals that say, well, you know, you need to pay a living wage. When $15 an hour in some communities is not a living wage. And let's face it. If you're unemployed, you don't have any wage. So coming in and, and, and just and then doing it unequally i mean who but a liberal nut job that does not understand business would ever tell companies well you know one kind of company you're gonna have to uh uh suck it up and 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 pay the minimum wage sooner than this other kind of company even though you're the same size because you're part of a friend as if the franchise gives the the, the owner money no the franchise they don't understand franchising Franchising is just, you're buying into a business model. You're not, um, you're not getting money from the franchise. In fact, you're paying the franchise a lot. You know, in a lot of cases, it's a lot. You want to try to get a fast food franchise, you're going to pay up front. And then you're going to pay in monthly royalties. And let's face it, franchise franchisors, you know, the big ones, they're, they're, you know, they don't want to wait for their cash. You know, you, you, you pony up that money, Jack. And if it means that you, the owner don't get a paycheck that month, then oh, well, you don't. 
But, you know, so it's not as if, oh, okay, now that he's a franchise, he's going to get more money because he's a franchise, uh, franchise or is going to pay him. No, that's not the way it works. You pay, you the franchisee pay the fr- franchise or. But the way they're trying to do this and say, well, because, well, if you're a franchise, you aggregate, you aggregate all these employees together and there's more than 500 employees, but that's not the case either because the franchise does not own the franch, the franchise or does not own the franchisee's business. It's a totally separate entity, separate owner. They don't own it. The mom and pop business owns it. So they're being punished because they saw an opportunity that they couldn't do on their own. So they found a franchise that could help them with a, with a system and a method and a name, possibly a name, that would help ensure that give them a better chance of being a success. You know, instead of Ma and Pa's Pizza, you know, this woman probably thought, you know, I'm going to go with the franchise model, Z's Pizza, because they have a name. I've never heard of them, but, you know, maybe in Seattle they're pretty big. Uh, Z's Pizza. Everybody knows Z's Pizza. And um, and they have a particular business model that's been very successful. So if I go with their business model, I'll be successful. That's what you pay for when you join a franchise, when you buy a franchise. But Seattle is telling them, well, since you're part of the franchise, even though you're the same size as Ma and Pa Pizza down the street, they're going to get an unfair advantage over you for the next four years. Or for four years. So you're going to have to pay your people this $15 minimum, $3 an hour more, $3 an hour more. And you're probably saying, well, you know, over 10 hours, right? That's only 30 bucks. Well, how many pizzas do you got to sell in order to make up that 30 bucks? If you give this employee a, a 10 hour over for 10 hours, a $30 a week raise, does that mean that you're going to automatically sell? More pizza to cover that $30? Or do you have to find that $30 from somewhere in the business? So if you have three employees, that's 90 bucks. So now you're going to say, you know what? If I let this employee go, I'll be able to cover the $60 for the two. And that's what businesses are doing. That's what they're preparing to do. And yet, yet we're supposed to believe that that is not what what it's all about. Folks, that's what it's all about. Don't doubt me. Hi, I'm George Foreman. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at InventHelp. Call InventHelp today for free information. InventHelp can submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new ideas. Call InventHelp today. To get your free inventor's information, call 1-800-352-1609. That's 1-800-352-1609. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street casino, and how to get the money you need when you need it, simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 52security.com. That's the number, 52security.com. 52security.com. Go to 52security.com. Hurt or injured in a car accident? It can be hard to take the proper legal action after a car accident, but waiting can cost you more. The law requires car accident victims to assert claims promptly. You could lose out by simply waiting. 
Call 800-709-4667 right now to see what your claim could be worth when handled by a skilled attorney. With a lawyer fighting and speaking up for you, you could be entitled to a big cash award. Call 800-709-4667. That's 800-709-4667. Now it's fast and easy to connect with the legal help you need after your car accident. Call 800-709-4667. The call is free, but you need to act now before time runs out on your claim. You need a lawyer to fight for you, protect you, and get you the compensation you need and deserve. Time's wasting. Call 800-709-4667. That's 800-709-4667. Call now. I considered suicide so I wouldn't put my family through all the pain. Many of our warriors are returning home from the battlefield only to face a new war. As they struggle with devastated injuries. At Wounded Warrior Project, we understand. We're there to help. Even though you think you're broken, you're not. It's the physical and the emotional healing that Wounded Warrior Project provides. With a gift of just $19 a month, you can join Wounded Warrior Project. You'll help provide critically needed programs and services that rebuild lives. Beautiful! The ongoing needs of our wounded and their families will continue for many years to come. Now is the time to show your support. Call now or go online with your gift of just $19 a month and we'll send you this Wounded Warrior Project blanket. It made me feel that there's people out there that care about us. After this event, we can finally maybe start to heal as a family and move forward. We need your help. The families are hurting. For many of our wounded heroes, the greatest casualty is being forgotten. That's why your gift of just $19 a month is so important. Please call or go online right now. You shouldn't have to pay to talk to the people closest to you or the people who used to be. That's why Umbrella Wireless is proud to announce the new friends, family, and recent ex-girlfriend plan. Now you'll get unlimited calls to your best buddy, your mom, or Cindy once she realizes that you're seriously meant for each other and should stop screening your calls. Now the 30 minutes of agonizing silence where you're both afraid to hang up may drain your battery, but it won't drain your wallet. And you'll get unlimited calls just to check if she still cares enough to pick up with no extra charges. With a friend's family and recent ex-girlfriend plan, your phone will automatically answer calls from your ex because maybe she finally realizes that you're the only one for her and wants to get coffee sometime. Now, after lonely nights of looking at pictures of the road trip you took together when everything was great, your misspelled texts are absolutely free. The only thing you have to pay for is the booze. The friend's family and recent ex-girlfriend plan. Because she wants you back, she just doesn't know it yet. I do love that one, that bumper, so much. Um, That's one of my favorite bumpers, by the way. And uh, you you start listening to the show, uh, when you start listening to the show next week, there's going to be a whole crop in there. I've got a ton of bumpers. I mean, we've we've got like 20 in the the stash that that I haven't used yet. So I'm going to go into a regular... Uh, expanded rotation of all these bumpers, but I might throw that one in more often because I re- that's one of my favorites. Um, but it, it's it's good stuff, and I've got I've got you know full length. I could probably do an um, a, a, an entire hour DJ program with nothing but the full length of many of the bumpers that I use here, and because you're only hearing a portion. Uh, of of the bumper, you know, the, the first thirty seconds or so, or, or a thirty second uh, period somewhere in there. And a lot of these bumpers, they some of the bumpers, they, their full length is like nearly five minutes long. Now I could get two or three bumpers out of one song or piece, musical piece, sometimes. But um, 
It, 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 and yeah, you know, these are, uh, I, a lot of them, I know who the composer is firsthand. So, um, not, none of this stuff, I, I have to worry about any sort of, um, um, royalty, running afoul of any royalty agreements or anything like that. All this stuff has already been cleared. So good to go on that kind of stuff. Try, you know, look, I'm trying to be fair to everybody, but I got to be frank when it comes to these, this royalty stuff, you know, what, what they, the reason why, and I have been asked, well, why don't you ever play, you know, like real songs or something? Well, first of all, I am playing real songs, but second of all, I know what you mean. You're talking about the mainstream stuff. Well, the reason is, and, and, and I don't, look, I don't blame them for it, but it's really expensive in order to pay the royalties that they're demanding in order for you to play even just 30 seconds of a song. I mean, it's outrageous in my book. Um, and so, but again, if, if other people are willing and can pay that price, more power to them getting that price. I am not denigrating them on that. Uh, you know, if, if, if I have a, if I had something out there, you know, a song and I'd probably want to get as much as much as I could off of it too. So I can't complain about that. But since I have a choice and I can go another route, I will choose the other route. It's all about having choice in the marketplace, in competition in the marketplace. Now, if they wanted to come down on their royalty fees, and let me tell you, you know, the royalty fees, the way, the way it is scheduled, and a lot of people just do not understand how this works. You actually have to go. There are two major royalty companies. Uh, that handle uh, the more popular pop music, rock, all that kind of stuff. And then there's there's another royalty uh, a company or publishing company that handles stuff like you know Christian music, you know like, like for him and all the all the contemporary Christian artists as well as the traditional Christian. Uh, they handle that. But you have to pay a certain based on your listenership a, a, a certain minimum annual fee. And that's hundreds of dollars for all three of them. And if you really want to cover your basis, because sometimes you don't, you're not fully aware of which company is covering the particular artist or song that that you want to play. So you, you know, if you if you if you're not going to do the Christian stuff, but you'd be surprised some of this contemporary music that we're hearing today, you know, especially in the dance music world, is actually Christian stuff that's covered by the Christian company. So you got to buy all three in order to be safe. Because if they catch you playing something that you're not licensed to play, not you will be fined heavily. And no, and they win. You have, you know, you could you could try to claim, well, I thought it was covered under here. They're saying it doesn't matter. You should have found out before you played it. Now pay up. So it costs hundreds of dollars for for just for the initial annual fee per royalty company. And that's just for three. The three, if you want to, there's other companies out there that cover other stuff. Um, so you got to really still pay attention to what you're playing. So you got to hunt, you're out hundreds of do- thousands of dollars just to start. And then you got to pay a monthly royalty fee based on the songs that you play and based not only the songs that you play, but what your listenership is and, and how many people potentially hear it. Now, in this particular case, since we're online, you know, and somebody could, could download your, your podcast well, they may fast forward and never hear that, or they may may not even uh, hear the entire podcast. But you're going to have to pay that royalty on that podcast download. You understand? And, and that begins to add up. Now, some people say, well, it's only pennies, Rod. That might be. But pennies turn into dollars. Dollars turn into hundreds of dollars. And before you know it, you're in you're in five figure territory in six figure territory because if you have a program that takes off or it starts and look all this stuff is tagged so they know you know they they can get a readout on a monthly basis of what you're doing and they'll give you a bill say well here it is 
And there and there's really not much you can do to dispute it because look, you know, like it's well look, no, your program was downloaded 150 times last week alone. Oh really? Yeah. On one network. Now you start multiplying it when you're in syndication. And it starts adding up fast. So I stay away from that stuff. Because one, I don't want to be tripped up because I end up playing some song that isn't covered by the three majors. Two, I don't want to be in an out, I don't want to be out thousands and thousands of dollars before I even get started. And I don't want to, I don't want a monthly bill that's a five figure bill because, you know, people download the, the, and look, you know, the, the, there are people who, when they, look, there are people who do certain things to, to certain, this is becoming a problem, by the way. They, because, uh, uh, shows that that play certain types of music and this is why some of them like me don't do it because there are people out there that will that will get an army together and they'll try to bankrupt you because they understand how this works they will just go and start downloading everywhere i mean they'll, they'll download it they'll download it for it's like you know you can find me on on itunes on you know t- uh 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 Tune in and SoundCloud. And what one person will do is they'll go in and download. They don't even have to listen. They'll just download from every single service you're on. And they'll get a bunch of people to do exactly the same thing. Well, now, because it's been downloaded, you've got to pay. And you've got to pay not for just one song, but for every single song you have in that show. And this is why a lot of online broadcasters that are not, you know, DJs, and they, DJs get special deals, but are not DJs, will not play royalty classified material because they know they can get hammered. And the royalty companies don't care. They just they just care the number. They don't care. They're not going to go in and look at the okay this IP address. They lo- downloaded it three times. Well, we're only going to charge you once. No, they don't care. They only care about how many times. They could determine if the same IP address downloaded multiple times, but they don't care. So that's why I do not use royalty uh, required music on my program. I will not. Because I am not going to get hammered, and I am not going to be, you know, out there playing a particular song that I am for sure is covered by one of the three majors, and then find out it's it's this fourth one over here that I didn't know about, and then I get a bill, a huge bill, and a fine, and a possible lawsuit if I don't pay the fine. I, I'm not going to deal with that. Just not going to do it. And I know a lot of a lot of um, networks out there are starting to take that same tack. They don't want to deal with it. Because now, now you're talking about multiple licenses. So my program might be covered with a certain license, but my, and again, they're kind of getting paid double, but the, the, the station that plays it, plays my download or plays my podcast or, 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 or gyps me live, they may not be covered. So they're going to get fined and then they're going to have to get covered. So again, I'm not putting my station, um, my stations that, that, that play this program in any type of jeopardy either. That, that, that wouldn't be right on my part. And and you're finding a lot of stations are just getting away from this because at the moment it's too costly, too expensive, too potentially confusing. And it's, it, it can be wrought with fraud. Like I just explained. So I stay away from it. So, and, 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 uh, maybe someday that'll change. Uh, it, it depends uh, if the industry changes or not. And, and I have a feeling that the industry at some point is going to have to change um, because the, 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 the music industry is so fragmented today because of new technology. Uh, it, now it is, it is highly possible for an average musician or songwriter to make a very good living. And I mean very good six figures or more a year without being signed to a major record label. It is highly possible. 
And this is how fragment, and this is why they're also, because record sales are, 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 have dropped and, and, you know, the, the major stars are not making as much, some that have been around for a long time aren't making as much as they used to. Uh, so, you know, they're kind of cracking down and paying more attention to this stuff. And, and maybe at some point, you know, the record companies, they, they might go away. They might be dinosaurs. I don't know. Um, but it, you know, it, it, it is, it is what it is. Hey, Lindsey Graham says that as president, he would veto any bill without path to citizenship. I, this is from the Washington Times. And Lindsey Graham is, well, he's a rhino. We, you know, he's a Republican in name only. We get it. We understand it. But for him to actually say any bill without pa- look, they did that with Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan to after he was after he got out of office to his grave was sorry that he fell into that trap and went along with the the, the amnesty that he went along with. Yeah, because that was one thing, you know, that his whole thing was trust but verify. That was one thing that he failed to verify before he trusted with Congress. Because, you know, Congress said, yeah, 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 yeah. Rank, hey, Ronnie boy, we're going to fix the border. You know, we're going to close it down. We're, gonna, we're not going to have this problem ever again. And Ronald said, oh, good old Ronnie said, well, okay, if we're going to fix the, if we're going to fix the issue and we're never going to have to revisit this issue again. I'll sign it into law. And then he did it. The Democrats, you know, rubbed their hands together and said, (laughs) he bought it. And he did. And he regretted it. And now we've got Lindsey Graham coming around saying, you know, if I'm president, then I'm going to veto any bill without path. No, Lindsey. You kick them out. You round them up and you kick. Look, you know, I I find it amazing that we have so many people who say, you know, oh, Rod, we can't find 11 million people and round him up and kick him out of the country. Really? But but we can we can we can uh, come up with a plan to you know some of you you libertarians who who believe in in, in this uh, conspiracy theory stuff that, that we can round up you know half the population of the country then. We can't find and round up 11 million people, but we can round up 150 million people and stick them in detention camps. Yeah. How is that possible? Well, we don't have to pick and choose. You don't have to pick and choose with finding an illegal. You know where they are. You know how to find them. It just takes the will to do so. It's not very hard actually, to, to find illegals. Because if they come here and they're trying to find work, it's easy to, to flag to flag them. With today's technology, and our, if our government can, can tap into our phone lines and pick up our phone conversations and our cell phone through metadata and through just snapping it out of the air and, and storing it, they can do the same thing with trying to pick out who's an illegal and who's not with other types of, of documentation, like Social Security. Number. Oh, wait a minute. We got... Well, this person is dead. Well, how are they working again? Or wait a minute. Uh, this person is working over here in this state and working over here in this state. How is that possible? Uh, it, it's, it's not difficult to find most of these people. It just takes the will to do so. But likely Republican presidential candidate uh, predicted a Thursday that the GOP will lose 2016 presidential election unless they win over Hispanic voters. That is not the truth either. I don't know what... Look, you're not going to win over liberals. You're not going to win over liberals. You have fallen into this trap time and time and time and time again. You know, if we don't do this, then then this this minority that normally votes liberal is is, is going to continue, is going to vote liberal if we don't do it. But if we do do it, they're going to like us. No, they're not. They're not. You got to stand on. They're going to respect you for standing on principle. And quite frankly, this whole notion that the that the Latino vote is going to go automatically Democrat if we do this 
if we go along, or excuse me, if we don't go along with it, then I don't know where do where do Cruz and Rubio and all their Latino supporters come from then. They've got a massive following in their communities. The whole point is, is we do not have to do what Democrats do. In other words, we've got to go on the offensive. Lindsay is still over there trying to play defense. You know when the most points are scored in football? Is when teams go to a prevent defense later in the game. No, no, no. We got to do it. We got to, all we're trying to do, we'll give up a few yards. We just got to keep them from scoring. And what happens is, is a team marches down the field because they know that they're going to get a few yards each time. All they need to do is get enough to get to the first down. And then they get, then they need enough yardage of the next three or four plays to get to the first down again. And even if they don't get a touchdown, they get close enough where they can score a field goal. And that's what the prevent defense is really all about is just keeping them from scoring a touchdown. But they give up too much in between. The teams that limit the amount of scoring in the fourth quarter do not go to a prevent defense. And I know I just mentioned football, and no, I'm not going to talk about Tom Brady. I know some people are asking, what do you think of Tom Brady? He's a good-looking, wealthy guy married to a beautiful woman. That's all I think about. Who cares? It's not important. Whether or not Tom Brady cheated cheated during the playoff games or ever, is not important. Let the NFL take care of it. I don't care. I I mean, people are more worried about whether Tom Brady cheated or not than over what Lindsey Graham is just saying. And over what any of the other people who are running for office are saying. That's Tom Brady's more important. I mean, I'm listening to, to, to... to, to Rush and to, and to Sean Hannity. And I'm thinking, these guys are taking up not only minutes, but hours on this. Su- are you kidding me? What? How is that going to determine any sort of foreign policy? It's not. How is that going to determine any sort of domestic policy? It's not. But everybody's wrapped up and preoccupied with Tom Brady and the and deflate gate and whatever that crap was. I don't care. It it wasn't. I don't care if Tom Brady, you know, plays with 11 and a half pounds of pressure on instead of 11.6 pounds. It isn't going to change the game on him. They're, they still would have won all the games that they won. They still would have been Super Bowl champions. But you're going to tell me that's more important than Lindsey Graham saying, well, you know, yeah, if, I, if I'm president, I'm not going to sign any bill. That doesn't have uh, that doesn't come with uh, uh, a path to citizenship for illegal immigrants. Meanwhile, we've got more than four million people in the world who are waiting to come here legally, and they will get boxed out. They're trying to do things the right way. And they will, because they want to come here, they want to assimilate, they want to make a contribution, but they're going to get boxed out. And you know why they're going to get boxed out? Because most of that 4 million that come here, they're going to be Republican or conservative voters when they finally become citizens. Because they're coming from countries where they don't trust government in the first place. That's the whole point. Lindsey Graham just doesn't seem to want to get that. If he thinks that he is trying to win over some votes, what he needs to do is find a way to get those 4 million that are waiting legally over here. Because, and set them on a path, on a quick path to citizenship. Because they'll be conservative voters. But no, 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 we get, we're told, we're buying the lie from the left. Well, you know, if you, if you don't, if you don't get these people into, onto a path of citizenship, you know, eventually they will be citizens and they're not going to vote for you. They're not going to vote for you anyway. Because they're getting, they're the kind of people that come here and get all the goodies. And the only people handing out the goodies are the liberals. But see that 4 million that's waiting, they don't want the goodies. They're coming here for the opportunity to contribute and to make their own way because they cannot do it in their own country. Plain and simple. 
They don't want government good. They don't even want it. They don't want the government coming to their doorstep if they can get away with it. They want to be left alone. Especially those people coming from, you know, very oppressive government places like, like from uh, Asian co- uh, countries. Or where, or where the economy is so bad, like that's what Indians from India used to want to come here because they, were, they had no opportunity in India. Now that is changing in India, but before they had no, absolutely zero. They came here for education and most of them stayed because the opportunity to utilize and make good on the education that they came here for is still here. And now Lindsay's out there wanting to say, hey, you know what? I'm, I, I'd, veto, I'd veto any bill that came to my desk without a path to citizenship. Well, I say this is exactly why you're not going to be elected president. You're not going to get the nomination. So, Lindsay, please do not even enter the race. Because that is a bunch of BS. You stupid rhino. Look, I'm going to be hitting these people hard. And if you like Lindsey Graham, I'm not sorry that I'm hitting him. He is a rhino. He's a Republican in name only. He would probably be more comfortable on the Democratic side, although he'd be considered one of those conservative Democrats, but he'd still be more comfortable on the Democratic side. And you know what? I think that's where he should go. Because he sure isn't standing up for the Constitution and the laws of this country when he's saying, I'd veto a bill without any path to citizenship. No, me as president, I'd veto any bill that came across my desk that doesn't have get rid of the illegals because they broke the law. Send them packing. That's the kind of thing that I would veto if that didn't come across my my desk. Because I'm not going to reward people for breaking our country's laws because I sure as hell can't get away with it going into Mexico. I sure as hell can't get away with it going into Canada. So why should we let all these people come over illegally across our southern border, keep our borders porous, and then reward them? Oh yeah, folks, you know, <laughs> these people, I tell you, they... um. They, I don't know what else to say about this, but uh, you know what? I'm out of time for tonight. Have a great weekend, folks, and uh, we'll be back here Monday, so don't miss out. I'm Rod Echols. This is the Rod Echols Show. I'm out.